Hey guys and welcome again. Uh, last couple of videos we were working with um, moment of inertia for a rectangle and I did one moment of inertia with the rectangle with respect to the center, the centroid, and the other one with respect to the base. Now I'm going to just show you, it's a really quick video, a really small video, on how to convert one into other uh, by using the Steiner theorem or the parallel axis theorem. So let's see and let's show you what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, if you have the moment of inertia or you have a rectangle like this, B, H, and the center is located right here, remember this distance is H divided by 2, same as this one, H divided by 2, because the center is located at the center, geometrical center of this figure. The moment of inertia that we calculated with respect to the centroidal X, with respect to, with the centroidal axis with respect to X, it was b h cubed divided by 12. That means that if we have a set of axes here, x0, y0, that was the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid. However, when if we calculate it with respect to an axis that passes through here, let's say x and the y, I'm not going to even consider the y, but if you want to consider y here, you can, x and y, then the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis that we calculate was b h q divided by 3. Now, this is respect to the base, this is respect to the centroid. Now, what if you want to convert one into the other, into the other one? So, you just have to apply the Steiner theorem. The Steiner theorem, or parallel axis theorem, says that ix, moment of inertia with respect to any arbitrary axis, is going to be equal to the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid plus the area multiply by a distance because I'm measuring in x this time and calculating x the distance is going to be in y squared. That distance in, w in y is the distance that separates both axes. The, the constant distance that separates both axes. In this case that dy is represented by this. This is going to be that distance in y. And that distance is y in y is h divided by 2. The only thing that we have to do if we have this and we can convert it into that one you just apply this equation. So let's let's see how it works. I sub x equal I sub zero x, which is b h q divided by twelve, plus a. What is the a? The area of the rectangle b times h. That's the area multiplied by the distance in y, which is h divided by two square. Solving for it, I x equal b h q divided by twelve plus this is h square times h is h cubed, bh cubed, 2 squared is 4, bh cubed divided by 4. And when you solve for this, this is going to be 12 here, 12, 1, 12, 3, 4, 4 divided by 12, 1 third, so bh cubed divided by 3, which is what we did before. Now be careful, because if what you have is the opposite, I have the moment of inertia with respect to any axis, and I want to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid, I have to solve for that one here. From this equation, step let's say that I want I have now the moment of inertia with respect to this axis and I want to convert it to the centroid. So if I want to do that, then I have to solve in that equation I sub zero x equal I sub x minus a times a distance in y squared. Now let's apply the same thing. I sub zero x equal I sub x is this one, b h q divided by 3 minus the area b times h multiplied by the distance in y squared which is h divided by 2 squared. When you do that you have bhq divided by 3 minus bhq divided by 4 and that is 12 4 4 minus 3 1 bhq divided by 12 which is what we said before. So this is a simple way that you can convert one into the other one. And I'm explaining you this because in my next video I'm going to show you how to do the moment of inertia in, in integrals with respect to a triangle. And you're going to see how messy it becomes when you want to try to calculate directly the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid. However, if you calculate it first with respect to the base and transport it and calculate the one to the centroid, it's going to become infinitely easier to do that. So I hope that you enjoyed this one. I know they are doing short, I'm doing now short videos, uh, but these are the basics. 
those are the concepts. If you understand these, you're going to understand the most complicated ones that I'm going to be doing later. I hope that you enjoy. Have a good